Special comedy night. Uh, my name's Kyle Dodd. Uh, don't worry, I'm not related to Ken Dodd. He's <laughs> I'm not related to him. Uh, but also, as well, before you ask again, no, I'm not the guy from the Mall Cop movie. <laughs> or the winner of an Eamon Holmes lookalike. Eamon Holmes! Yeah, I know. We'll talk about Ken Dodd. I mean, did you name that one the other day? newspaper about Ken Dodd. Oh my god. <laughs> Ken Dodd. It's got caught up in the latest Jimmy Sapple scandal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. hey, read a, a South American lady of 25 years ago visited Liverpool and had a, li a love child to Ken Dodd. Yeah. The newspaper said, um, here we go. <laughs> the newspaper said, and it's a son, said Mrs. Suarez. <laughs> <laughs> to Benidorm. Has anyone been to Benidorm in the room? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's a lovely place. It's the sort of place that if you drink a little cheap vodka, if you breathe, it'll sterilise the medical equipment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we're going all day to Benidorm this year, but there's a little bit of a funny story really I want to tell you. And what that funny story was, it was when we go into Benidorm one year, we not, normally when you go over Benidorm, you fly over the Pyrenees and you know, it can get a bit, bit shaky, a bit rocky with the turbulence and all that sort of shit. So, with this one flight, we went to Benidorm, we thought, we got on the Ryanair, because also not paying any fucking extortionate fees. <laughs> get, get a flu off, took off from Manchester, we goes over the Pyrenees, I thought, that's fucking odd, I said, there's no, there's no turbulence. Well, that's a bit weird. And in 15 minutes, the, the captain calls, bing bong! You know, we're about to land. There we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to land. Oh, that's a bit odd. So, <laughs> on the way down here, I thought, oh, we've had no turbulence. Next minute, there's fucking turbulence everywhere. It's <laughs> shaking, everything's cracking around. I thought, hey, what's happened there? We've not had any turbulence during the flight. So I get off the flight, I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm like, <laughs> shaking like a shitting dog. <laughs> goes, goes straight through to the airport, gets out of back. Out to my amusement, on the big screens, I don't know if last one's there. It's all our fucking faces. Right there now, I'll charge you for fake turbulence. I'm not charging for the fucking pictures in return. Oh dear. Uh, Jesus. That's so fucking lose. Yeah. You, you know, you know. Uh, oh, the wife's not here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The wife's not here tonight. Oh. Mainly due to bail restrictions. <laughs> <laughs> we voted the other day in the general election. First time together as a married couple going to vote together. Very, very sweet. Lovely girl. Lovely girl. <laughs> <laughs> so there we was, we had to dance together, we put our votes in the box. And I thought to myself on the dark side, there's some fucking days I want to put her in a different type of ready box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see all the lid. <laughs> we have an active sex life, we once had sex in the gym. Yeah. Oh, I have to cover your ears, Mum. What's that sex in the gym? <laughs> now, the problem we had with that is we, we had sex on the treadmill, so no one was in this gym. I know, it's not Nick Holden proper. The next minute, before you know it, the treadmill wasn't turned on, my fat ass twanged the treadmill on. The treadmill. <laughs> got caught in the treadmill and tore off the bastard foreskin. <laughs> and I thought to myself, that's one way to shed some skin, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Grandad, eh? Grandad, grandad. My granddad's an Irish gentleman, so he's one of the old school Irish gentlemen with the horseshoe sort of, a bit like mine. <laughs> um, he's an Irish fella, so he does a lot of DIY around the house and all that sort of stuff. So this one weekend, he was doing some DIY and then he was fixing you know, he's fixing the lights, but she'd done it all weekend, so my nana's sister, she was staying over. And I thought, she, she, she went to bed this one night. She thought, she's going to stay. She thought, I'm going to bed now. I'm going to bed now. She turns off, turns the light switch off. Fucking fuck, Jesus, that's been a little bell rang. She's like, you don't need him. Comes down the stairs. No one's ready at the door. Goes back up the stairs. Turns off the light switch, comes downstairs, what are you doing, baby? So she's in bits, she doesn't know what to do. 
So it only turns out after after talking to my granddad, he's only wired the fucking the, the fucking light switch to the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's a story. Here's a story for you. Me and the wife one day, well, I was having a shower one day, so you know what you do, you get in the shower with males, you, you might not know about this. But we know what's going on, don't we? They always leave the shit shampoo out, don't they? And hide the good stuff, like in a Swiss bottle or an arrow underneath the sink. So I get this shampoo, pink bottle, on me head. On Stinky Bridge. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gets out of the shower, goes to the wife, I go, yeah, that shampoo's amazing, I feel my fucking hair, she's like, yeah, it's soft, that's what she's using, the pink bottle, the pink bottle, and she's like, the pink bottle, I went, yeah, the pink bottle, she went, oh my fucking god, I went, why, she went, that's them fresh, <laughs> now, for anyone who doesn't have a bottle of them fresh at home, it's vaginal shampoo, <laughs> For the bits. <laughs> so not only did I look like a cunt, I also smelled like a cunt. I'm going to leave you tonight with something I feel very passionate about. So I'm just going to go into it. As we all know, coming up is the Eurovision Song Contest. Okay. Anyone watch the Eurovision Song Contest? Yay! No. Yay! No. <laughs> I feel very... <laughs> I feel very passionate about the Eurovision Song Contest, so, uh, sorry ladies, I'm give a shower in a minute. Uh, the I, I watch it every year, but I've been getting pissed off recent years, and I'm sick to fucking tired of Britain getting nil poire all the fucking time, finishing in the bottom, and, and let's be honest, you know, it's, the Eurovision Song Contest is an excuse for half of Europe to take a big fat shit on Britain live on European television. <laughs> So I watched it this year, and you know, we've sent apps over over the decades, you know, we've had uh, Jordan and her prize assets, <laughs> eh? and also as well we sent over Engelbert Hump, I think, when we really got the hump that year, <laughs> and then another year, I mean, I believe Ivan sent some, some tips over, that was at Jedward, <laughs> eh? Eh? yeah, so we, we, you know, I got a bit passionate about it, so I took it really seriously. So what do I do like any normal person, 21st century? I talk to Twitter, <laughs> oh yes. So I started tweeting the nations, I thought, fuck this, I'll take it to my own hands. I tweeted Germany and offered 16 bottles of 3.4% shit English lager for 12 points. I took to France, I thought, bonjour France! Je m'appelle French stick for 12 points. I am a French stick. Hola Spain! Hola Spain! I will go on holiday, <laughs> Benedict on life, if you give us 12 points. Unfortunately, all those nations didn't come back to me, I felt a bit disappointed. I thought, that's a fucking waste, wasn't it? Until I tweeted Ireland, and then I tweeted Ireland. Hi Ireland, can we have 12 points from you this year for a free barrel of Guinness? Ireland came back, and Ireland said, Fuck off! 